G'day ladies and germs, Connor here from c -Dubs Media, back with another video, and today my review of the Pixel Watch 2 is finally in. Yes, my results are in. I reckon I've tested it more than the other punk tech reviewers out there who wear it for a day and tell you their thoughts on it. I've actually been wearing this since its release. It is now November 20, something like that, and I reckon I've given it a good run for its money. Now, if you're upgrading, I think you're going to be disappointed if you do actually upgrade. If you are on the Pixel Watch original, Pixel Watch 1, stick with that. That's going to be my first tip, but I'm going to explain why through the rest of the video. And don't worry to all you bitches that can't handle having your tech criticized. Get over yourselves because I own it too, and I'm disappointed with my purchase too. And that, that buyer's remorse or buyer's defense where you want to defend your product we got to get rid of that get real about the products we buy and call them when they need calling on anyway apparently the pixel watch 2 is five grams lighter than the pixel watch will you notice that probably not i didn't i actually thought it did look slightly thinner but apparently it's not as well i mean i can't find any specs to say that it's thinner than the original so the build quality as well it's now aluminium and not stainless steel again do you really think you're gonna notice I'm not too sure about that because to be honest I can't notice but there are some design areas where you might have been expecting some slight changes in feel weight look size everything but it's just not really there and I reckon if you took the band off you wouldn't actually know which one was which and I think if you wore this which is the original thinking it was the two and went for a run and looked at your stats you wouldn't be you would not know which is slightly disappointing because the display although it could be bigger because it does have the world's biggest bezels are not smaller the bezels could be smaller i reckon they could be halved it would make a huge difference to the personal user experience of this watch so no actual change in the bezel which would have yeah like i say would have made a difference we've still got the crown the rotatable crown i do like using that from a build and design point of view it's a little bit satisfying to use that crown you can also press it as a button and there's a button on the two o'clock mark on the watch body as well which is a little bit harder to press same as the original but that brings up your recent apps or you can program it how you want but for me i just left it as it was out of the box now apparently the heart rate sensors are 40 percent better well i didn't think the original one was that fucking far out I thought it was pretty accurate so however they're clawing back this 40 percent is beyond me but apparently it is look i thought the original did a good job of tracking my heart rate while i was running you know if i was doing a long run it said my heart rate was high and if i was running upstairs it was high and and when i recovered from running up some stairs my heart rate went down and the watch reflected it and I have those same results on the Pixel Watch 2, so it's pretty accurate. Now there are the other features as well that I just don't think people use. You know, the ECG and all that sort of shit, like, no one's ever said to me, what's your ECG telling you today, Connor? No one. I think it's garbage, I think it's like, just like bragging rights because not many people use it. Now they do also say that it measures your body's temperature and gives you feedback on your body based on your temperature but it's not quite as simple as that it recognizes changes in your body and then asks you to tell it how you're feeling that's not what i fucking wanted you know like i'd rather know if i'm getting stressed rather than me having to go holy shit i'm stressed tell my watch i'm stressed back to front if you ask me i don't know what the point of that is is it like me just telling google when i'm stressed it's not actually my watch telling me that I'm becoming stressed and I should take steps to fix the situation. I just don't fucking get that. I'm sorry. But, I'm losing it. I'm going off track. Let's talk some more about the actual review. The temperature, it's not a temperature sense. Can't tell you that you're running a fever. Now, Wear OS 4 out of the box was one of the big selling points. I think the original has now caught up to that anyway. 
And that actually just gave you better optimization and a little bit better battery life, a little bit better performance. So nothing that uh, as outstanding. Like I didn't think that it was blowing me away with performance out of the box. It was just a very similar experience. But it does, it does now have backup restore, so you can restore your watch. Um, say you wipe it or something like that, you can also restore, or you can upgrade and restore from a previous Pixel Watch. So I do like that, that's pretty handy because previously, you know, going from one phone to another and having to re reset my watch and pair it to my new phone, now I'd lose all the data. But now it's got backup, like in that. And that's a result of Wear OS 4. Same for developers, it just makes things a little bit easier for developers now to create apps, so we should see some better app integration as the future unravels itself in terms of Wear OS 4 and Pixel Watches and stuff like that. So looking forward in that regard, like what else we get in terms of apps, because it's still pretty slim pickings. Now a new Snapdragon CPU in there as well. Originally it was Exynos and Google pretty much just came out and said we want to go with the best, Exynos isn't the best, we're going to go with Snapdragon. So Google thinks Snapdragon has the money for the Pixel Watch. Now it's got a bigger battery as well, which is somehow irrelevant because it's 12 milliamp hour battery. I get one day's use out of it. Whoever these tech reviewers are getting two days out of it, what the fuck are you talking about? Because I get up at 5am, I take it off the charger, I'll do like an hour to an hour and a half exercise and then I'll wear it throughout the day, getting my notifications throughout the day as well and I'm getting to bed with like 10% left. Some days I'm running out before I get to bed so battery life isn't that good. Uh, about the same again as the original Pixel Watch. If you're seeing improvements in battery life, tell me what you're doing to get that because it ain't happening for me. It's a one day watch, one day wonder. That's what we're going to call them there, one day wonders. Same with the Pixel 8 Pro, it's a one day wonder. Now I guess I want to talk about all that other shit, whatever. Sleep tracking, yeah, yeah it does it, so what? It's really not that important because it's only as accurate as you believe it to be. Like it's, there's no actual evidence anywhere to say that any of the sensors in this are tracking anything correctly. They're getting pretty close, but I don't know if it's worthwhile saying that it's accurate and good evidence to be adjusting your health on. But we do like using them. We like our notifications on our wrist. We like being able to track our exercise and our activity and our steps. And we like being connected to our smartphone when we can't be. So in that sense, it does that. I don't know if that's a good thing. I really don't. But exercise. Okay, so I use Google Fit as my exercise tracker for the last couple of years. I like it, it tracks my runs, it's nice and simple, it tracks my cycling. The only thing it never tracked properly was swimming. And boy was I excited to see that swimming was an exercise you could choose in the list of exercises on the Fitbit app on the watch. Here I am thinking, you beauty, I'm gonna be tracking my swimming. Well, guess what? It cannot track swimming, not to save itself. It's a piece of crap. It's more like something you would throw in the water and your kids would dive under and whoever gets it first wins. It's more like one of those toys because I was swimming for like 500 meters and it would tell me I've swam 900. And this is after putting in the length of the pool and all that, putting the stats in, telling it what I need to tell it so it could track it accurately and it couldn't. And you know, years ago, I went through three or four Fitbits. None of them could track swimming properly. They were just garbage. And it seems like they haven't changed that. When it comes to Fitbit and swim tracking, they just don't go well together. Get rid of them. Now, it might track open water swimming, but that's just pretty much like using a stopwatch while you're swimming. It won't tell you how far you've swam. It won't tell you anything else. It just will tell you how long you've been swimming for and it might pick up some heart rate data in those swims as well. But again, how accurate can that be? So if you're getting this for swimming, don't get a Galaxy watch. They have figured it out. Their watches are like, I'd say 95% accurate when it comes to swimming. 
Even the Xiaomi watches, those little $60 watches, man, they are way better than the Google Pixel watches. Now, when it comes to GPS tracking, heart rate tracking for your runs, cycling, walking, all that sort of thing, I did find it pretty accurate, and I didn't find it to be any more accurate using the Google Fit app or the Google Fitbit app. None was really better than the other. I like the Google Fit. I, s I just hope and pray that they fuck Fitbit off forever and never go back to it because I just prefer the Google app. But running, so I did like a 10K run on my usual 10K loop and it said that I had achieved a 10K run. That was using Fitbit. So I'm pretty confident that the GPS was accurate, accurate enough. There was a couple times where it was a little bit off uh, but that can happen with any tracking device, so I didn't read into that too much. I think this is pretty much as good as any other you're going to get when it comes to tracking your exercises. Same with cycling or walking, it would always tell me exactly how far I've gone, and I think it was pretty accurate. So overall, I think it's a pretty good tracker for those cardio-based workouts where you're out of water. Now for those stationary workouts where you might be in the gym or at home working out on your patio, it's really just again then it's just like a timer with a heart rate sensor so there's nothing fancy going on there. It seemed to again track my heart rate accurately when I was doing that. Now if you're someone who doesn't exercise in water, only ever exercises out on the land, then you're going to be pretty happy with the tracking results for exercising. Not too much fuss there. I like using it, I think it's pretty cool. Again, use the Google Fit app or the Fitbit app or one of your own that you prefer. Seems to do a pretty similar job across the apps. Other than that, most of it's pretty similar to the original Pixel Watch. It's really not worth upgrading if you're on a Pixel Watch 1. I do think if you don't have a Pixel Watch yet and you want one, just get the two. It's always best to get the next latest and greatest. However, for Black Friday sales, which are right now, I did see the Pixel Watch 1 for like 220 Aussie dollars. That's like $50 American or some shit. But anyway, I saw it for a real deal online. So in that case, maybe it is worth getting the Pixel 1. Now, to close out, I'm just going to say I have recently just taken Fitbit off the watch. I don't use Fitbit anymore. It's still shit. Always it has been, and I've gone back to purely just the Google Fit exercise app and the assistant and everything is in the watch. I've deleted all notifications so it doesn't interrupt my day. I was getting a bit overwhelmed with like notifications on the phone, notifications on the watch. It just becomes a bit too much. So I've reduced that. So now it is a watch and an exercise tracker and nothing else. And I'm appreciating that. I'm actually enjoying that. And one last thing that is the biggest improvement I have seen on the Pixel Watch 2 so far. When I put it on Do Not Disturb mode on the watch, it also puts my phone on Do Not Disturb mode. My goodness, about time. I don't know how the fuck they could think that was acceptable to not do that on the original one. Thank you, Google. About time. That is the biggest upgrade I've seen on the Pixel Watch 2. Now, I'm currently about to release my review on the Pixel 8 Pro. I've been using it non-stop. It's been my daily driver, so you're going to get a very thorough review on that as well. Hit the like button and the subscribe button if you'd like to see that. I'm stoked that at least one person has watched this, even if it was my grandma. Thanks, grandma. Check out.